The functional neurosurgery program at Weill Cornell began roughly 25 years ago. We wanted to create both a subspecialized department and a department that was founded on innovation and research combined with top flight clinical excellence. Functional neurosurgery involves treatment of diseases such as movement disorders, in particular essential tremor and Parkinson's disease, as well as dystonia. What functional neurosurgery does is take cutting edge advanced neuroscience and try to bring new tools to areas of the brain that were previously impossible to access through traditional open surgery safely and deliver things that can be much more advanced than what we have historically used. Over the last 25 years, we have done that, I think, extraordinarily well to the benefit of our patients, to the benefit of both the clinical and basic science of the fields that we're interested in, and obviously to the benefit of those to come that we are going to play some role in providing even more advanced therapies. Movement disorders comprise a wide range of illnesses, and so the symptoms are quite varied. We are working to incorporate all of the latest technologies in order to diagnose them. So we readily use DAT scans, which have been on the market to help distinguish between Parkinson's disease and essential tremor. We also are incorporating skin biopsies. In terms of treating them, we try to do as much of a multidisciplinary approach. When appropriate, we incorporate our neurosurgical colleagues, our neurogenetics colleagues. We utilize physical therapy, occupational therapy, our social worker, and make sure that all their needs are taken care of to the best of our ability. Deep brain stimulation has really revolutionized the way we treat our movement disorder patients. Electrically, it's altering specific pathways to enable Parkinson's patients, for example, to be able to move better. Botulinum toxin therapy has been a mainstay for focal uh, dystonias, where one part of the body is affected, or segmental dystonias, where you have two or more continuous segments. It helps in reducing the muscle contraction, so it can alleviate pain, it can alleviate different postures that develop over time. So we're really utilizing all the best available tools that we have. Gene therapy has been the scientific passion of my life. The idea of gene therapy is that you can put genes into cells in the body to change the way they function, to either protect them from cell death in diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and others, or to make cells function better in all of these diseases when circuits are dysfunctional. Several of us had the idea that maybe we could modify viruses in a way that could retain the efficiency of the gene delivery, particularly brain cells, neurons while at the same time eliminating anything that could cause them to uh, create toxicity or disease. And that was really the major breakthrough that enabled the concept of gene therapy in the nervous system. We came upon an idea of how this could be applied to Parkinson's disease, and that led to the very first FDA approval for a clinical trial in human beings of a gene therapy for any adult neurological disorder. My laboratory is continuing to work on a host of new gene therapy approaches to Parkinson's disease, to memory disorders. We've started an aggressive program trying to use gene therapy for complex pain. So we're trying to work on the next generation of therapies while we continue to develop in the clinic some of those things that we've already been working on for years. The way neurodegenerative disorders progress differently in men and women, this is like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease, is that they can have different incidence and prevalence. For instance, Parkinson is more frequent in men than women. And there is also a difference in terms of response to therapy with women showing a more adverse effect. The research that we're doing here at Wild Cornell is to address the role of menopause on Parkinson's disease. It's to look at how different stages influence the onset and the progression of the disease. And we have an amazing new model of menopause that really allows us to do this that we could not do before. We are finding that during different stages of menopause, there is actually an increased risk for Parkinson's. We need to understand what are the mechanisms that are different in men and women so we can really move on from a one-size-fits-all diagnosis and therapy to a more tailored and personalized type of medicine. The idea behind focused ultrasound is that we can use ultrasound waves to non-invasively ablate or lesion 
the same targets that we had historically treated with invasive surgery. The concept is that ultrasound will go through the intact skull, but at a fairly low level of energy that is not capable of performing an ablation on its own. But there is this helmet with slightly more than a thousand sources of ultrasound studying the helmet. Each source sends a beam of ultrasound through the skull to a target. You can add up the energy of roughly a thousand beams of ultrasound only at the target where they converge, which is incredibly precise. And that allows us to deliver enough energy to actually heat that area up and ablate or destroy it without opening the head or the brain. We were the first site in New York and one of the first in the country to offer this to our patients. We have been doing that now for almost nine years. Our institution has done over 500 procedures. So we are really trying to push the envelope with all ways in which one could use ultrasound while obviously having a very robust and active clinical practice for patients in need right now. We're just as hungry, just as energetic as we were on day one, and that's in large part because of the environment that we're in that's encouraging that type of thing and really valuing the innovation that we've tried to bring to the table and that we would like to continue to do over many years. If we want to see the advancement of science in the United States, there has to be investment. The things that Dr. Kaplan has applied, the Focus Ultrasound, developing gene therapy and applying those two technologies to treat a variety of diseases, it takes money, it takes investment, and it takes time and research for us to achieve those goals. This is not just a hospital, it is a medical college for a reason. Resident education is a big part of what we do here. And we all take that mission very seriously. It's a matter of being able to give our patients options, whatever stage of their condition is. And if we're able to provide some option for them, then it's, I think, a really meaningful interaction. Thanks for watching this AAN TV feature. Now, an important disclaimer. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.